Hello, and thank you for joining us today for a look into the credit union movement and philosophy. Today, we will look into four key areas of credit unions. What is a credit union? The credit union movement, credit union history, and the credit union philosophy. First, let's talk about the age-old question, what is a credit union? A credit union is a cooperative financial institution owned and controlled by the people who use its services. These people are their members. Credit unions serve groups that share something in common, such as where they work, live, or worship. Credit unions are not-for-profit and exist to provide a safe, convenient place for their members to save money and to get loans at reasonable rates. Credit unions, like other financial institutions, are closely regulated. The National Credit Union Share Insurance Fund, administered by an agency of the federal government called the National Credit Union Administration, or NCUA, ensures deposits of credit union members at federal and state chartered credit unions nationwide. Deposits are insured up to $250,000. What makes a credit union different from a bank? These financial institutions accept deposits and make loans, but unlike credit unions, banks are in business to make a profit. Banks are owned by groups of stockholders whose interests include earning a healthy return on their investments. Credit union membership varies based on what the credit union's stated field of membership is. Many employers sponsor their own credit unions and employees of these companies, as well as their family members can join. Others can be based on your location. If you live, work, go to school, or worship in a certain geographic location, you may meet the requirements of that credit union. Others are group-based. For example, it would be a credit union based on a specific place of worship. Anyone affiliated with that group, regardless of where they work or live, could join. Now we turn our attention to the credit union movement. The first credit union sprang up in Germany in the 1850s and 1860s and were designed to meet the savings and loans needs of small agricultural communities. As the 20th century began, Alphonse Desjardins created the first credit union in Canada to meet the financial needs of poorer and more vulnerable sectors of his community that were often taken advantage of by unethical lenders. Canada's successful efforts profoundly influenced two Americans, Pierre Jay, the Massachusetts Banking Commissioner, and Edward Feline, a Boston merchant. The two men helped organize public hearings on credit union legislation in Massachusetts, leading to passage of the first state Credit Union Act in 1909. Growth in the industry was slow. Fewer than 10 states passed credit union laws. Alphonse Desjardins was instrumental in forming the Canadian and U.S. credit union movements. Besides helping to found the first credit unions in Canada and the U.S., he pioneered youth savings clubs and school banks to introduce the concept to the youth of the day. Roy Bergengren was an American attorney and pioneer of the United States credit union movement. Hired by Edward Feline in July 1921 to head the Credit Union National Extension Bureau, Bergengren carried out an ambitious legislative agenda that resulted in the enactment of the Federal Credit Union Act, the creation of the Credit Union National Association, or CUNA, and the foundation of thousands of credit unions across the United States. The key principles of the credit union movement were volunteerism, self-help, one member, one vote, and the consideration of a person's character as well as net worth. As you can tell, the credit union idea is a simple one. People should be able to pool their money and make loans to each other. It's an idea that evolved from cooperative activities in 19th century Europe. Since that time, guiding principles have remained the same. In 1934, President Roosevelt signed into law the Federal Credit Union Act, which promoted savings and made credit available to a nationwide network of nonprofit credit unions. The New Deal initiative was based on the Massachusetts Credit Union Act of 1909. The legislation allowed credit unions to be chartered either under federal or state law, a policy that remains in place today. 
The first official Credit Union Day was celebrated on the third Thursday in October 1948. That celebration is now known as International Credit Union Day. In 1970, the Credit Union National Administration became an independent federal agency. Congress also created the National Credit Union Share Insurance Fund to protect deposits at credit unions. The 1970s also brought major changes in the products offered by financial institutions, and credit unions too found they needed to expand their services. In 1977, federal legislation allowed U.S. credit unions to offer new services to their members, including share certificates and mortgages. Credit unions grew tremendously during the 1970s. The number of credit union members more than doubled during the decade, and credit union assets tripled to more than $65 billion throughout the 1990s and into the start of the 21st century. In 1934, when credit unions were helping Americans through the Great Depression, the treasurer of a Midwestern credit union said that credit unions were not for profit, not for charity, but for service. That philosophy holds true today. Earlier, we discussed several different examples between a credit union and a bank. They are all equally important and are worth repeating, such as credit unions are not-for-profit financial cooperatives. They are financial institutions that must generate enough profit to provide dividends to members, to continually improve services and build institutional reserves for the safety and soundness of the future of the credit union. But their mission is social, and credit unions exist to serve their members, not make a profit. Earnings are returned to members in the form of lower rates, higher interest on deposits, and lower fees on services. Federal credit unions are tax exempt, which was established in 1937, affirmed by the statute in 1951, and reaffirmed in 1998 in H.R. 1151, the Credit Union Membership Access Act. This act states credit unions, unlike many other participants in the financial services market, are exempt from federal and most state taxes because credit unions are member-owned, democratically operated, not-for-profit organizations. They are also generally managed by volunteer boards of directors, and because they have the specific mission of meeting the credit and saving needs of members, especially persons of modest means. Credit unions, like all other cooperatives, operate under the seven cooperative principles. These include voluntary membership, Credit unions are voluntary, cooperative organizations offering services to people willing to accept the responsibilities and benefits of membership without gender, social, racial, political, or religious discrimination. Many cooperatives, such as credit unions, operate as not-for-profit institutions with volunteer boards of directors. In the case of credit unions, members are drawn from defined fields of membership. Democratic Member Control Cooperatives are democratic organizations owned and controlled by their members. One member, one vote, with equal opportunity for participation in setting policies and making decisions. Members' Economic Participation Members are owners. They contribute to and democratically control the capital of the cooperative. This benefits members in proportion to the transactions with the cooperative rather than on the capital invested. For credit unions, which typically offer better rates, fees, and services than for-profit financial institutions, members recognize benefits in proportion to the extent of their financial transactions and general usage. Autonomy and Independence Cooperatives are autonomous, self-help organizations controlled by their members. If the cooperative enters into agreements with other organizations or raises capital from external sources, it is done so based on terms that ensure democratic control by the member and maintains the cooperative autonomy. Education, Training, and Information Cooperatives provide education and training for members, elected representatives, managers, and employees so they can contribute effectively to the development of the cooperative. 
Credit unions place particular importance on educational opportunities for their volunteer directors and financial education for their members and the public, especially the nation's youth. Credit unions also recognize the importance of ensuring the general public and policymakers are informed about the nature, structure, and benefits of cooperatives. Cooperation among cooperatives. Cooperatives serve their members most effectively and strengthen the cooperative movement by working together through local, state, regional, national, and international structures. Concern for community. While focusing on member needs, cooperatives work for the sustainable development of communities, including people of modest means, through policies developed and accepted by the members. Credit unions continue to look out for their members' interests with empathy and understanding and provide a level of service that is not generally available at other financial institutions. Whether it's providing a loan to help a member cover unexpected medical bills, giving financial counseling to a member, or simply offering a better deal on a used car loan, credit unions make a difference for their members and the communities they serve. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about the credit union movement.